Right, back to the Mac. Ah, uh, yeah, that's why I've not been doing Mac videos. I've been playing with this for a while. Let's get the Mac out. Uh. So today I return to this Raspberry Scuzzy, which I showed you when I was soldering these on a few videos ago. So let's see how this actually works. Oh no, you'll never guess what's happened. For some reason, all the video of me assembling this has lost its audio. I don't know. All right, so for once, Spider Math is going to have to do a voiceover. And this is not my forte. I've not written it out, but yeah, here it is anyway. If you remember, JLC PCB did all of this for me, put all of those little resistors on the back and I soldered these octal buffers on the front. So we're going to have to put the extra bits on them. So one of the things we've got to put is a header in. So there's two different ways we can do this. This is a, a header. Uh, this is what connects to the Raspberry Pi. I'm not going to use this one because this is a more expensive one. And it goes into this little header socket. Now you can put these either on the Raspberry Pi or on the RAS C board. You can also use two individual ones like that, but you've got to get them aligned. And the other thing that you need is this 25 way connector. And that goes on the board like so. I'm not sure this is the right way it's on the board yet. Let's wait till I actually solder it on to make sure it's going in the right way. These have got little clips on, so it, when I push it in, it will hold it on. And that's the connector I need on this. And that's compatible with the cable that I've got. Oh, here's something else, the little USB connectors. This is a micro or mini USB, you never know the difference. This is a fiddly thing. I'm going to be doing a lot more fiddly stuff with this. Yeah, let's fiddle up. Whoops, dropped it already. All these massive, great big spider hands. I don't know. Fists, horrible things. How on earth am I going to do any of this little stuff? But uh, yeah, oh, oh, voice action. Always exciting when we get the voice out. Oh, look at that. Soldering time. Oh no, right, okay, it's fiddly time. Let's just mess about with this a bit more. Yeah, that's about right. Oh, shaky hands. Yeah, it's in there somewhere, spider math. Come on, you can do it. Right. No, nope. give up. I've given up. What am I doing? Oh, oh yes, it's flux time. Big, nice. Massive flux there. The flux is also sticky. It will help it to stay in position. Oh, tweezers. Look at me shaking. Yeah, spider math decides to use some tweezers. And here we go. Here comes a soldering. Dirty soldering tip. Better clean that. I bet I didn't. Well, I did a little bit. And there we go. That looks lovely. Just solder the one bit on first. Oh, no, oh, not it. Oh, let's pop it back. All right, let's hold it down with the tweezers. Good idea. Past spider math. And a little dab of solder on there. Oh, there it popped back into shape. I'm really concerned about those little connectors down the front. So I'm just soldering it on in one place first, then it's easier for me to uh, adjust it afterwards, oh, like so. so. I'm going to try and look down there, the front, and then solder those connections, the actual data connections on. Oh, no, I'm going to zoom in. Ah, oh, no, look, I do all this to get this perfect for you. And look, what have I done? Oh, man, it's blurred. Oh, I've got my solder fan on there. You can see that's about the only thing. I'm um, sorry about this blurredness there. Yeah, it looks like have I done that yet? No, I'm going to do this bit. Sorry. We'll uh, we'll go through this quickly so that you don't have to watch any more of this blurriness. It looks like that's gone on perfectly. Lovely. All right. So now the header. Let's work out which way it's got to go. And oh, yeah, you see. So the header sticks out on the resistor side of the board. That's important. So uh, nothing connects to whoops hairy arm nothing connects to the buffer side of the board but of course all the soldering for the through hole stuff goes on well there we go what was i doing there all right yeah so i put one of them on one connector and then lift it off and then just pop it into place to make sure that that connector is aligned with the board that worked all right 
bit more vice action, bit more flux. Oh no, I've gone and done it again. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't know why you put up with me. It's the trouble having uh, no glasses on and looking at your phone screen and you're thinking it's in focus and it's blurred twice. Anyway, that's got that over with. That was relatively nice, wasn't it? So that's the header board soldered on or the header pin soldered on. Let's clip this in. This should hold itself on. Click, there you go, in it goes. So no need to do much messing about with this to get it aligned. It should automatically be aligned. A bit more flux now. Oh, look, I haven't zoomed in. So uh, maybe I'll just zoom in. in po oh, I forgot those two at the end. How, how did I miss two pins with flux? But anyway, here we go. Oh, look, I zoomed in in post. There we go. Lovely, juicy solder. Look at that. Oh, nice little bits on the end to hold it in. And let's plug it in. Simple as that. Turn it on. And we should see a green light, which means it's working. So now those chips do get hot eventually. Now we've got to plug the Pi into it. Here's the Pi. Notice I've soldered the socket on the bottom of that. And the next thing we've got to do is mount the card. It's on the card, but let's just plug it in first. Click. Didn't actually make a click, more of a sound. Let's do the card. So here I am on GitHub. I keep on seeing, saying this wrong. It seems like every time I mention it, I say it wrong. But this is a Rascuzzi. And I think the reason I'm getting it mixed up is because on the GitHub, it's PySCSI, and uh, I think someone picked up the project, um, I'm not sure. So I'm using the terms interchangeable, apologies to the original creator of the projects. So the setup instructions here are pretty easy. You go to the wiki after you've gone to GitHub PySCSI, and we can download the SD card image. We go to releases. Yeah, so here we are at releases, and if we scroll down, we can find the ones that we need here. And for me, I just downloaded this arm hf zip. So uh, we download that for the newest version or the version that we've chosen. We have a couple of different builds here on different days, so uh, get whichever build you want and download it. And then if we want, you can alter the um, Wi-Fi which is a good idea. So we've got the instructions on here, SD card info. So when to open it, it's probably easier once you've downloaded the file and flashed the card. I use Etcher to flash the card on the Mac, but you can use anything that you can burn SD cards with. But once you've got that, you can go to this bit and you can open it and add your SSID and your password for your wireless LAN on it. Then the next thing you have to do is boot it. So I'll plug mine in. I'm using a decent power supply for this. Um, but once it's plugged in, get it the right way and turn it on. And then uh, we should start seeing activity on lots of different LEDs there while it's booting the SD card. And once it's done that, we'll go to its web page and let's have a look at that. So here we go. It starts the interface the first time it does it. So this is uh, the Pi's booting. It took a while to get to it. And there is the interface. Now you can get to this on your phone. You can get to it on your iPad, get to it on anything that's connected to your local Wi-Fi. These are the actual drives. And here are some sample boot disks. When you see this, you'll be presented with all these things. But there are some boot disks here. Now, if you remember, I was originally using my zip disk to boot and I used version six on that. So there's several different versions here. There's, there's a version six, uh, which comes pre-installed on the SD card. And you've got this little thing so you can extract and you can open these zips. And that's what this little folder is. But I haven't actually attached that to these SCSI devices. So obviously this little SD card can hold way more information than the original SCSI drive, which is quite incredible, really. I'm going to set this up and I'm going to connect it to the Mac and then we'll mount this drive. All right. So now this Mac has booted. All I'm going to do 
as you see it's showing the question mark and all I need to do is select an ID on that I'm just going to say ID 6 none of them are in use apart from 7 so I'm just going to use ID 6 there and I'm just going to attach and let's watch the Mac as I click attach So isn't that cool? Did you see how fast that booted as well? I can start to explore this now and see what's on this hard drive. Now I've got an option to connect a modern hard drive in it. But I think maybe the next thing I'd like to do is to connect my SCSI zip disk to this. And for that, I'm going to need a through connector and these boards that I've got don't have a through connector these have got to be at the end of the SCSI chain really it's going to be the last thing that's on there so I'm going to need to do something different now this was so much fun creating this maybe I should try and create the full size one and get some of those boards ordered Hope you enjoyed this video and found this interesting using some more modern tech on my old Apple Mac. Maybe a few more planned for the Mac, I don't know, but I've, as you know, I do lots of different things on the channel. So if you want to see what I'm doing next, please hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, just give it a thumbs up or just tell me what I did wrong, because I bet I did something wrong in this video. Bye! My, that's a big box spider map. I wonder what's in this. Just use my miniature rubbish sludger. Whoa.